There is a lot that we have experienced, that we have discussed, talked about, a lot of input that we have received here at the Mission in Progress Climate Neutral and Smart Cities Conference 2023. And it is my great pleasure and honor to welcome for the concluding remarks on stage. And please give it up with a very warm and loud and welcoming applause, the Vice President of the European Commission. Please welcome with me on stage, Franz Timmermans. The stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm, uh, I do apologize for being late, but traffic is uh, uh, a nightmare right now. Um, I'm sure uh, you're all looking forward to drinks or dinner or something else. So I'm probably the only, probably the only obstacle between uh, you and that. Uh, but um, I just heard that you spent two very intensive days discussing your progress, um, realizing that we all face a lot of hurdles, physical, political, financial, etc. Uh, but I do want to commend you for your dedication to the issue, which doesn't just come out of the sky. It's because you know this is what your citizens need and what your citizens want. Hmm. So my first, op my first message to you would be, to continue on this journey is not just one of the options we have. It's an absolute necessity. And I think this understanding should be broadly shared as much as we can. Of course, you have many options of what to do, but there's no denying that you will have to do it. Um, it seems these days that every subsequent scientific study that we receive concludes that things are even worse than we thought. I'm just looking forward for a study that would say, calm down, nothing happening here, we're all right, but we haven't had one of those yet. And the latest IPCC reports show that in Europe as a continent, we need to up our game to become the climate neutral continent we want to be by, by 2050. The Green Deal sets us uh, in the right direction. I think it's coherent. It's not just about the long-term objectives. It's about the paths that we need to follow to get there. Um, and it also has set into law our goals of reducing our emissions with at least 55% uh, by 2030 and reach climate neutrality by 2050. Um, and as I said, we face obstacles. Some of them are political, some of them very practical, down to things like the lack of enough construction material to meet the renovation needs, and some of them inflicted upon us by others. Uh, Russia's barbaric war against Ukraine has had huge consequences for all of us, for energy, for the prices, has an effect on inflation, and it affects every citizen's daily life. And I have to say I'm proud to live on a continent where the solidarity shown to Ukraine is persistent. It is high, at a high level across the European Union, not just in those neighboring states of Ukraine that are taking the brunt uh, of the, the refugee uh, issue, but across the European Union. And it, main, it is maintained at high levels, and I think this is a source of pride, and I want to particularly thank those of you who represent cities who have taken in sometimes tens of thousands of refugees and done so sometimes at high cost to you and not always compensated for by national authorities. And thank you so much for having me on that. Yes. Very often in politics, as you know better than I do, the immediate crisis drives out the long-term challenge. And this is a luxury we can't afford. And if I insist on our climate goals, if I insist on our need to restore our natural environment, if I insist on the need to transform 
our inner cities, to make them greener, to decarbonize transport, to uh, make uh, uh, heating and cooling uh, energy efficient, but also to change the energy systems to renewable energy. It's not because I'm obsessed with this, and I, I'm, uh, as some would say, uh, uh, obsessed with green issues. No, no, it's not that. It's because I know we have no time to lose. We absolutely have no time to lose. And this issue, the interesting thing about this issue is that the earlier you invest, the quicker you, you take the measures, the lower the cost will be. The longer you wait, the higher the cost, the bigger the damage, the more people will die. Do we know that in Europe alone, every year still 300,000 people die prematurely because of bad air quality. This is something we can fix, and you are fixing it. Your work as part of the city mission is courageous and it is necessary. You will be able to show Europe what our cities of the future can look like and what climate neutrality really means. Clean air, safe streets, green spaces. Inside the city mission, the climate city contracts are a particular useful tool. They're designed to bring people together to agree with them your journey to climate neutrality and to involve government, local private partners and investors. It is great news that 12 such climate city contracts have already reached the commission for review. Congratulations uh, to the pioneers among you. But these tools and processes are not an end in themselves. Use them to your advantage, but keep in mind the overall goal and what you need to do to get there. And this brings me to, to my second message. The hard work starts after the hard work is done. Nelson Mandela said it always seems impossible until it is done. I am an optimist and a firm believer that we have it in us to solve the climate crisis and to help nature recover. As you well know, the real hard work is the work of implementation. And I will want to ensure you of the Commission's full support in your mission journey. You may know that missions as a novelty in the Horizon uh, Europe program are being evaluated before the end of the year, and I'm convinced that the city missions will show its full worth and EU added value. In many of your cities, and this is remarkable, and those of you who haven't done it yet, I could recommend to look at it. You've changed the way your administration functions to tackle the climate transition. You work better across departments. It's the same in the Commission's mission team, which brings together colleagues from 12 different departments. I mean, when I think back on my first experience with the Commission many, many years ago, you know, even calling the department silos would be understating the situation. Uh, and we're overcoming this so quickly, out of necessity, we need to. And I'm sure that's a situation in your cities uh, as well. And there are many examples of synergies with other initiatives, for example, with the Connecting Europe facility for transport. This federating power of missions truly is a great strength, also because there are many um, EU initiatives for cities. The mission can bring it together. The clear goal and timeline focuses attention on the true, true priorities, the concrete plans and needs described in your climate city contracts help other initiatives and funders see where they can contribute. Collectively, you're developing a compendium of solutions that can be replicated elsewhere. And here I turn to the cities that are not among the 12 mission cities. This is your mission too. You can already now benefit from many activities, including pilot calls and a twinning program, and there will be more and more offers as we progress. So what should our, the Commission's support, look like from here. We've taken note of all the feedback that you've shared over the past two days, whether it refers to funding, more direct involvement of cities in decision-making processes, for supporting your contacts with national governments. And I promise we will stay in this listening mode, that we will learn together with you, and that we will join you in doing the hard work that comes after all this hard work. My third message, um, and this, I think, is something that will decide whether we will succeed or not. Prove together with us that we can do this without leaving anyone behind. Um, 
climate policy often is referred to as an elitist thing, as something for the well-to-do, as, as I always say, for the driving tofu eaters. But the ones suffering most from the consequence of the climate crisis are the people who are already suffering in other areas because they're ill, because they're unemployed, because they live in bad housing, uh, because they have nowhere else to go, um, et cetera, et cetera. It is always the same. When there's a new crisis, it's always the people already in a difficult position that suffer more than anybody else. And now we have an opportunity, especially in the city. I think about housing, I think about public transport, I think about greening the cities, where the benefits of this transformation can be truly attributed to everyone, can be truly shared to everyone. And this is, for me, uh, probably uh, the most important message for you today. Um, there is a book I've read recently which, which I can recommend by a, a British professor called Peter Frankopan about the transformations the planet has gone through in a number of climate change issues we've had in the past because we've had climate change often but over very long periods of time and it always has the effect to disrupt it always leads to people migrating somewhere else, to people having to change their way of life, having to change, find different jobs. It always leads to agriculture being transformed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And this is even more intrusive. It is faster than anything we've ever experienced before. It is more unpredictable than anything we've experienced before. And it's affecting the whole planet at the same time. So we need to react. And you're reacting and you should be proud of what you have achieved. So, in conclusion, um, I have to repeat, what we're doing is not for fun. It can be fun, don't mind that. It's not an option, it's not one of many things we can do, it's something we need to do. And the more we're clear about the fact that this needs to be done, the more I think we can get people to come on board. Second message is, it's all right to have targets, it's all right to have laws, it's all right to have clear goals, but it's much more difficult to actually implement them. That's where the hard work starts and that's where you, you will have to do the hard work and we will be um, at, on your side to do that. And again, again and again, the, there will be a just transition or the just will be no transition. This is, I think, the core issue we need to address. The climate crisis is the social challenge of our and next generation, combined with a biodiversity crisis, because it affects every aspect of our lives. It affects every aspect of our economy. It affects every aspect of human relations. And so the sooner we address it, the sooner we find solutions, the sooner we can showcase cities who have become cleaner, uh, greener and therefore the temperature has gone down, not up, who have created new forms of transport, new forms of heating and cooling, and therefore the air quality has gone up, not down, and people stay healthier, who have become more attractive for others and at the same time are prepared for this future created uh, by the climate crisis. If we can showcase those and get others to tag along, get others to make the same transformation, cities will be an example across the planet and will also be inspi in inspirational for rural um, areas that will have to go through the same forms of changes uh, as well. So let's work together, let's make this a success. And me, for me, let's stop because I've said enough and it's about time you could do something more enjoyable, such as talking to each other, which you were doing when I came in, and I don't want to stop that any longer. Thank you very, very much for your attention. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, Vice President Franz Timmermans. Thank you so much for reinforcing not only the urgency but also the optimism. And if there's one thing that I can remind you of as well is that yesterday when we started, I asked all of you, how optimistic are you that you're actually gonna make this 
climate transition to being climate neutral cities work. And I remember that all of you raised your hands. All of you have decided to be those pioneers, even though all of you have to go through hardships and challenges and maybe even frustrations. So if you're taking away, besides all the inspiration, the inputs, the speeches, one thing, then I would like to remind you of that feeling of conviction that your hand went straight up, that yes, we can do this. And I would also like to remind you of the feeling that you're not alone in this, but you were one hand amongst a lot of other hands in this room that were all in this together. And I think this is exactly what we will need in order for you to be the first 100 and plus climate neutral and smart cities by 2030. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your contributions. See you next year and let's see where we will be on the path then. I wish you all a wonderful evening and goodbye. Just before people leave, we'd like to invite Tara Nelson to the stage, please. Um. Tara! <laughs> from, I'm Nick Rendell from Eurocities. And Alexandra from the European Commission, but the star was one today, and this yeah. is Tara who make it all happen, guys. This event has represented everything that Eurocities stands for as a membership network, as cities coming together to work together for a better common future. But it's been made happen by hard work from everyone here and from many different people, but most particularly from the woman on my right here, Tara, who joined us in December and since then has spent every working day organizing this space. So we just want to say thank you. I was not going to get her cut flowers, okay? <laughs> Thank you everyone for coming. It's been fantastic to have you. And now please go enjoy your evenings and have some drinks. Thank you. Thank you.